when we first finalise the colour scheme, you're like, oh God, it's going to be Oscar Wilde by way of a Brazilian bordello on his way to meet Marie Antoinette or something like that. I knew I wanted to live in this area. I've loved it around here for years, and I grew up just off Portobello Road. And I looked at so many houses, but one of the big issues I had was the big painting I have downstairs in the hallway. Enormous, impossible to place in most London spaces. And then finally, I found this place, and as soon as I walked in, I loved it. I'd already been in touch with Bandit at this point, kind of saying, this is my plan, please will you help me? you know, uh, realise yeah, my, 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 dream, my dream, my dream home. What I really didn't want to do with this house was have this like, crazy idea, do it all, and then in a, in a year, 18 months, be bored of it and want to do something completely different. And that's when yeah. you were yeah. so instrumental in just stripping back my ideas and being like, this is, this is what it should be. We started this by looking at what you already had. Mm. Even, you know, when, when we got to the point of the list of stuff that we did need to buy, it was very much looking at antiques. We wanted to be very selective about who, you know, what we bought, making sure that it was from a brand that we liked or from a designer that we either knew or liked or was local. The additional skills we needed in the house, it made sense to go into our address book, really, and see, yeah. and, you know, and, and, and champion the work of people who we really love and care about. And the project has taken just over a year. Good things, good things do take time. They do take time, but I'm, I'm, I'm very ready to kind of show, show everyone what we've, what well, darling, we've I mean, done. You know, it was always about a party, so yeah. we are going to have the party. Finally have that Christmas drinks party. I know. Let's I know. hope they like it. It's pretty decorated in here already, but it's um, yeah, we don't it's fun it. just... Well, I mean, do we not want to overdo well, it? Well, this room, I think we can overdo it. Maybe we'll keep yeah. it a bit more... This is quite camp in here. Yeah. I do, I do quite really? enjoy it. Really? No. The moment you come in, we had this amazing idea that it would just be perfect to connect the two spaces downstairs, upstairs together with this vibrant kind of movement that really recalled, you know, the, the sort of the palette work of, of, of the painting that's next to it. And, you know, it really is another artwork in the house. This one is called Cylinder. And the small shards that you see, we call them shards of glass. They're actually picked up when the glass is hot. So it's a drawing that's in glass. You wouldn't know that. It's very abstracted by the time it becomes a rug. Being able to actually share this physically with you was such an excitement. Um, because, you know, so often, you know, when something happens, it's far away, you never really get to see it. And it is really joyful. And I think, you know... It's your that, welcome. Yeah, it is. It is. It's the perfect welcome. So, thank it's an you. an invitation. Yeah. Hello, you. Oh, hi. Thank you. Hi, darling. Come and come sit. Thank you very much. When I kind of told him what I wanted, Benedict suggested that I got in touch with you and uh, looking into the, uh, and, and kind of recommended that I looked into the Farnborough archive. And so we had quite a lot of fun going through the colours and splashing them on the wall and really going big with the samples until we finally settled on what we kind of have here. I wanted something that was reflective of, you know, who I am as a person now, as well as like lots of nods to my past. So I grew up in Brazil, so that really obviously informs a lot of the brighter colour choices yeah. in the house or the vibrancy. And then it goes into sort of more Mediterranean, which is where I spent a lot of my childhood growing up with my grandfather, which is more the kitchen. The way you've layered the greens in next door with the bancha, which is from our current collection, and then bringing your, as you say, your origins, you know, living in Brazil and everything, coming to this fiery red of bisque, which is just so unexpected. 
But it's really beautiful. It's not oppressive. It's not like, I couldn't live in this space. It's no, actually, no. It sort of wraps you up and just makes you smile. I think we've settled on some pretty good choices in here. <laughs> you certainly have. You certainly have. You know my name, well, Viola. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Means yeah. purple. What's strange is we keep on yelling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's very exciting to have you in this space. This room doesn't really have a proper function in some senses. It's an attic room, it's quite low ceiling. Because of that, sort of including your work in here was very important for me. This particular yes. pattern here, which was created yeah. by you, kind of using some paper and some starch, no? Yeah, starch and paper. It's yeah. like an old technique for decorative papers. In fact, it even recalled the sort of, there's a strange kind of enormous Japanese floor vase over there, which has this kind of wavy rim, which in some senses could be, yeah, Ooh. could be kind of almost horrible. It's back to my love of horror charm. Um, but it, it all worked together. And then the serpentine of this table. And it's sometimes it's hard to really I know you get it, but it's hard get to... Get it, to add movement to exactly. a room that otherwise it's quite... It's quite, it's yeah, quite it's quite rigid with, in here. With decorative elements. Exactly, and because this yeah. is the end of the house, I almost wanted people to be drawn up the staircase and into a vortex. Yes, and I love how you use the shades. The fantastic thing about your shades is that they have yes. this sort of slightly fugitive shape because the light moves around them, so they have this movement again. Yes. And why do you find the carpet? How did you find the matching carpet? Well, I suppose, so this, it wasn't really supposed to be matching, but this is actually recycled office carpet. This room, you know, everything is low in here, and the idea is that people can come in, they can sit on the sofa, there's some big floor cushions, and you can kind of sit around and play games or talk or whatever. And we've worked together on a few things, and it's always been a very, yeah. it's always been a very productive, sort of subconscious kind of conversation. Yeah, I think, yeah, the great, great ideas come from conversation and yeah. interaction with friends yeah. and other creatives. Yeah, well that's it, you know, I mean we spend a lot of time talking so it's not unusual that we should find some kind of synergy in our, yes. in our work. Thanks for coming, guys. So we're sitting here in the what we rather grandly call the library, which kind of feeds into the whole country house aesthetic that we were going for. But this room came together quite quickly, actually, um, in terms compared to the rest of the house. It was something that we were very clear about what we wanted. But rather unusually, we because there's so much going on in the room itself, we hadn't really thought about the floor and about the carpet and. It was actually the last thing that we put in was this carpet, and we weren't even sure if we were going to do one. And then when you released your collection, we saw it and thought, oh my god, this is almost like it's made for this room. A lot of people perhaps wouldn't consider a lilac rug, and I think in a place like, in a room like this, it makes it really special. Mm -hmm. um, and as you say, it really completes the room because the greens sort of pick up each other, whereas the lilac sort of feels special, and it's a little bit eye-catching, but at the same time doesn't scream or take over. Mm -hmm. And weirdly something you would maybe never think, but I think in this room the lilac almost becomes a neutral, yes. which is quite cool. Mm. Yeah. When we came and you pointed out these amazing tiles, which exactly. I guess were probably original to the house, mm -hmm. um, and they've got that sort of Victorian kind of floral thing with the bird, and I think the bird's wings picks up the lilac really well. It's very cool that you kind of give birth to this thing and then it's no longer yours. Mm -hmm. and you can kind of watch it go out into the world and have its own life, which I think is quite exciting. It's almost like watching, you know, going first day of school type yeah. of thing. You're like, bye, have a lovely <laughs> life, and then takes on its own little yeah. universe. And then it invites you around for drinks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, see how it's getting on. And here we yeah. are. <laughs> and here we are.
We're in the kitchen, which is definitely one of my, if not my favorite room in the house. I think one of the things I love most about it is the color. It's definitely one of the rooms I spend the most time in, which is ironic, bearing in mind I can boil an egg and that's about it. So what I tend to do is I tend to invite per dinner party group someone who is an excellent cook and they take over as soon as they arrive, um, which is terrible. I mean, Gavin even, for example, tonight knew this about me and brought a cake knowing that I would have thought all about dessert. So tonight, seeing as it's a bit of a special occasion and we've got all the creatives coming, I thought I would ensure we had something edible to actually eat. So my favourite local restaurant, which is called Ida, which is around the corner actually, they're very sweetly dropping us some nice food for us to eat this evening, which will be great. Look how pretty. Look how nice these are. Thank you, darling. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. This is looking amazing. It's very exciting to have you in the space, finally. The theme of this kitchen really is very much things that could be humble, um, but actually for me, for, for you, for Max, are worthy of more consideration than some people might you know, normally bother to give something. I mean, you know. Well, I think he likes handmade things by the looks of it. He does, he does, yeah, which is why we have rather a lot of your ceramics in here. I think I showed him one plate and he just ran with it. Actually, I prefer to see them on the setting before you eat, in a way, so that you see a whole table of them. They look quite charming. You fill them with food, they're not so funny. But when they're naughty and you're eating <laughs> it's quite... I might have to actually just slightly... You could put slightly, a... Slightly, yeah, I'm going to just... You could put a do. cracker. Yeah, I'll put a cracker, a well-positioned cracker on there. But, you know, you do get the idea. They're quite nice because you can be a little bit playful and a little bit naughty. I think plates can be naughty because they're such a sort of domestic, everyday, boring thing. He has a good eye, that man. He has a good eye. I think one of the really fantastic things for me about doing this project with him is that I've been able to introduce other artists and makers who I love, and yeah. he has really connected with them. I think that is really one of the things that this whole house has been. It's very much not just been this creative collaboration, but also it's been about friendship and, you know, not just my friendship with Max, but friendship with other people. And, you know, but I'm it so... feels like it's fun. Yeah, it's fun, that's fun. it. And, and having fun, yeah. I think, you know. And I love it. Which is, which is so thrilling it's to so be refreshing. able to... Yeah. I always think with any project, one of the things that you have to do is you have to find the story. And this was about making a space for you to you know, entertain in. This has always been a kind of drinks party in a funny way. Yeah. One of the reasons why people just turf stuff out is because they're not really connected to things. Mm. And I've always felt that if you, if you have a strong connection to something, you tend to really value it and love it for longer. If you enjoy somebody's work, you kind of really, you get enthused. Often, you know, they see things in a different way and they offer a fresh take and a fresh perspective and that makes it so much more interesting and so much more fun. Yeah.